Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video from Inside the Eve Echo's final test. Today we're going to be looking at covert ops cloaking devices, stealth bombers, and how you can use those two things together to have a crazy fun times out in space. Now before we jump in on this one, if you do enjoy the video, let me know by hitting a like on it. Subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and of course ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. If you've got a particular question you want answered or a topic you'd like to see me cover in a future video, let me know in the comment section down below or by finding me on the social media channels along the bottom of the screen. Come join the Catskull Cartel Discord, we do have public channels where you can talk about all things Eve Echoes, ask for help, get loads of advice and just meet some crazy cool people. And of course, if you do really enjoy this channel as well, if you want to go the extra mile to help support, you can do so on Patreon. Every pledge really helps me out, I'm always super grateful for every dollar that you guys put towards keeping this channel going. So thank you all so very much. Cool, that said and done, let's talk about stealth bombers. We're going to have a look at the Minmatar Hound, because of course it's Minmatar, this is me we're talking about. Now if we look at its stats, it's got three high slots, two medium slots, three low slots, and then two of each rig. It's when we get to the roll bonus though that things start getting weird. This is a frigate, as you can see at the top right, but it has a roll bonus for a 90% reduction in medium torpedo power grid need. Medium torpedoes? But aren't those usually reserved for cruisers? Yes, they are, but this ship specializes in using those. That is what a stealth bomber is. Ultimately, these will take medium torpedoes, you can put those on there, and they will work beautifully. You also get a 50% reduction to cloaking device reactivation delay, plus one max covert ops cloaking devices, which we'll come back to in a second, and a full 100% reduction in the cloaking device lock delay. That's important, we're going to come back to all of those later, but the most important thing here to look at is that plus one max covert ops cloaking device. Ultimately, a, a covert ops cloaking device can only be fitted to ships that have this roll bonus, which is usually covert ops ships or stealth bombers. They are the only ones that can take those cloaking devices. Otherwise, you can just put a standard cloaking device on other things and go from there. Then for the skill bonuses, for every skill that you have for medium missile torpedo upgrade, you will get 10% torpedo explosive damage, 5% torpedo electromagnetic damage, and a 10% torpedo flight velocity, which of course means extra range. That's at full skill training, that's 50% explosive. 10 uh, sorry, 25% electromagnetic and 50% extra uh, range basically from the flight velocity. And for expert frigate command, you're going to get a total of 25% extra flight velocity, which just allows you to move around. Now, as you look at it, it is otherwise pretty much a frigate in every other sense of the word, stat wise, fairly fast moving, good warp speed, low power grid, um, decent enough capacitors for what you're going to be using at that size, especially with the reduction to uh, how torpedoes are going to be using on all of that. Very medium-ish cargo hold. You, you get bigger, you get smaller on uh, on frigates, but there we go. So if we have a look at how I have outfitted this particular one to start with, obviously in the high slots we have gone for those medium torpedoes like it suggests. Now I've gone for Republic Fleet medium torpedo launchers because I had a couple of these ones spare lying around from, uh, from some anomalies that I was doing earlier. These, if we look at the stats on them, you can see medium torpedoes are of course the short range blasty torpedoes designed really for taking out cruisers and larger ships than that. They're not really great against things like frigates or destroyers. And that's where a stealth bomber does come unstuck. It does struggle against those, but you're not really going to be doing many solo operations in a stealth bomber, um, like through anomalies, etc. Missile range of nine kilometers um, obviously looks pretty short until we go back and we see that this thing does get some rather uh, boosts there to the uh, medium torpedo flight velocity. It gets a lot of extra range there, which I will showcase in space in a moment. So those are what I've got for there, but of course any medium torpedoes will work on this. In the low slots, because I want to be able to move around fairly quickly, we do of course have an afterburner, small afterburner, and a, a Mark V small shield booster. Because if we look at the Hound's stats, it is a Minmatar ship, you'd expect it to be a shield tank, but just to showcase there, 884 shield hit points, 792 armor hit points, and 708 on the structure. So yes, this is a shield tank, if you're going to be doing any form of tanking, you shouldn't be in one of these, ultimately the main point is to hit and run. Um, then ultimately shield tanking is what you want to go for. So this is the kind of ship where you can actually swap that out if you wanted to for something like a missile guidance computer. If I have one, I don't think I've got one in my bay. No, I haven't. But that is something you can do that might up the DPS of this just a little bit. 
Now, the final device I have in the low slots here is, of course, a Mark V Covert Ops cloaking device. Now, again, as it says in here at the bottom, restriction can only be fitted to Covert Ops tech-enabled ships. If we look at the Minmatar Hound, we know that this has that Max Covert Ops cloaking device bonus that allows you to use it. Now, what this does, ultimately, is it turns your ship completely invisible. You don't appear anywhere. No one can lock you, no one can see you, unless you get within 2,000 kilometers, uh, 2,000 kilometers, woohoo, 2,000 meters, two kilometers or something, then you are rather stuffed and you will be revealed. What it also does, um, ultimately, it, it just allows you to sneak up on people and move around. The difference between a standard cloaking device and a covert ops cloaking device is that a covert ops cloaking device you can still warp with. Rather than a standard cloaking device, you're going to have to warp into an area, then put the co uh, cloaking device on, assuming no one's locked you with the covert ops. You can move in long before they see you. Now, skill-wise, obviously, you're going to be looking at typical frigate skills here. Frigate Command, Advanced Frigate Command, Under Maintenance Technology, Shield Operations, always useful. Frigate Defense Upgrade, 100% useful here. And Under Weapon Technology, of course, we want to go into those Medium Missile Torpedo Operation and Medium Missile Torpedo Upgrade in order to get the most out of those torpedoes, the most damage um, and the most out of the, the Hound's skills itself. Now, of course, it's not just the Hound that is a, uh, is a stealth bomber. They are available to all four of the main empires. If we go into the Galente tree, see if I can find the right one here. It's usually Tech 6. There it is, the Nemesis. Now, the Nemesis has bonuses to kinetic and explosive damage on, the, on its missiles. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. There is a slight difference on the Expert Frigate Command each time. The Nemesis gets an Inertia modifier, so it can just turn and fire a little bit easier. Under Kaldari, if we have a look at the Kaldari fleets, um, up to Tech 6, there it is. It is the Manticore. The Manticore gets bonuses to Thermal and Kinetic and has a reduction to its signature radius, so it's harder to hit than other ones. And the Amar. Now, this is actually one of the few examples where an Amar ship actually does appeal to me. I normally don't like the Amar aesthetic. I think it's a bit like ostentatious and over the top, but the Purifier actually looks pretty cool. And if we look down on this one, this gives electromagnetic and thermal damage. Kind of what you'd expect from an Amar with additional scan resolution, which means it does lock onto targets just that little bit faster than the others. If you've got that fully out, that's 25% yeah, faster locking, which is always quite a nice thing to have. Anyway, so having had a look at those, let's actually see this in action. So let's undock and have a look at how the Covert Ops cloaking devices actually work in effect. So undocking from the station, zooming the camera in so we can see. Obviously, I'm right next to a station. That means I'm within the 2,000 meters. If I try to put that cloaking device on, you see here, it says unable to do so as I'm within 2,000 meters of the nearby station. So if we pop on the, uh, the afterburner there so I can get a bit of distance from me and the station that I'm in, you'll see that I can then pop this on. Wait for it. Also, curiously, because of the graphic settings, there it is. Beautiful station. I do love how this one looks. Stunning. Anyway, now that we're more than 2,000 uh, two kilometers out, 2,000 meters, I can put the clo uh, cloaking device on, and boom, there we are. I have now disappeared from the overview. I don't appear in uh, for any locks. If you're scrolling through here and you go to ship, you will not see me currently. I will, however, still appear in local. My name will still appear in local, but you'll just have no idea where I actually am. And this actually, as I said, unlike other cloaking devices, I can immediately, not loot, so I go to Cosmic Anomaly, I can pick any one of these and I can warp in quite comfortably and I shouldn't get targeted by anything. I say shouldn't. Um, <laughs> if, if I go in now and accidentally appear within two kilometers or something and my cloak drops, that's just going to be hilarious. So I am going to just get station ready. But you see, obviously, I'm warping now with the... Uh, with, with, with the cloak still active. This means theoretically as I land now, no one should lock me, no one should open fire, and I should be pretty safe just sitting here. This is where things like the, uh, the, the probe covert ops can actually be pretty useful as well, um, as you can come into an anomaly, stop like this, have a look at what's actually going on, see if there's anyone out here, see what kind of ships are in that anomaly, decide whether it's something you want to do or not, and if it is something you want to do, awesome, you can decloak and open fire, or like here, I can warp back out, I can let other people know what's in this particular field. You can't loot 
even with a uh, even with a covert ops cloaking device, you still can't loot. If I tried to loot anything there, it tells me, no, sorry, you can't do that. But there we are. That's now me coming out of that anomaly. You can see there, nothing's shooting at me. We're quite comfortable there. Let's minimize that. Now, in the bottom right, there is this strange icon here now on screen that you should be able to see, um, which is ultimately bombard mode. Now, bombard mode, yeah, here we are. You see I've come within uh, two kilometers now of the station, so my shield, uh, my cloaking there drops, and it goes on a little bit of a cooldown. Um, normally, as well, when you drop a cloaking device, you have a few seconds before you can lock onto something, which does mean if anyone's seen you, then obviously they're going to use those few seconds to get out. The bonus for the... Uh, for the hound itself for all of these uh, for all of these stealth bombers here as you can see though is that 100% reduction to cloaking device lock delay you can unlock uh, und sorry uncloak and immediately lock but here in the bottom right I was talking about bombard mode now if I tap this you'll see you get all these little buffs appear on the right hand side the most important of these are that the missile explosion radius goes uh, right up the velocity goes right down the range is massively increased so you can hit people from a much further range than you normally would the ship now itself though does move at a ridiculously slow rate as you'll see if I put the afterburn on now and actually let's just use this opportunity to approach towards blood angel in bombard mode you'll see even with an afterburner on i barely move at all it is just it's quite sad actually it's quite sad how slow you move um, with bombard mode on as a frigate moving at like 45 kilometers per second with an afterburner active like you know just that, that's insane that's insane. But it does mean that if I can open the stats here now, you'll see that that missile range has shot all the way up to 43.52 kilometers, which for torpedoes is just massive. The explosion radius is fairly large and the explosion velocity is very slow, so you do want to be firing that at big or stationary targets. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in a moment. Now, if I turn bombard mode off, obviously my ship signature radius now collapses back. I get my movement speed back. Um, and if we reopen here, you'll see that this has now dropped all the way down to 15.44 kilometers with a much faster explosion radius and a much smaller, uh, much, sorry, a much faster explosion velocity and a much smaller explosion radius. That just means um, that, you know, now I can hit smaller targets that little bit easier. Anyway, so enough talk about all of this. I've got some help waiting for me. Let's head out and, uh, and get started with a little bit of the fun for this video. So I've asked one of the Catskull Cartel members, Nicholas Pierce, to hide out in a nearby asteroid belt with his Tyra. So I'm going to showcase what the Covert Cloaking Ops can do, along with Bombard Mode and how this all works with the Stealth Bomber. So I know he's here in N7BIY4, Asteroid Belt. So we're going to be jumping straight across to that one now, having a little look-see, seeing if he, we can spot him. Obviously, I'm not in a fleet, and I am cloaked. And you can see straight up and down, the Covert Ops cloaking device allows me to warp whilst cloaked. And there he is, Nicholas Pierce, with a friend sort of guarding him as well. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to move away from Nicholas to a distance of about 50 kilometers, I think should be fine, possibly even just as low as 40. I just want to get a bit of distance between us. Now, at this point, you can see obviously the ships in the top right of the screen that I can see. I will not be appearing on his screen right now. I am cloaked. I do not appear there, which ultimately is fairly terrifying if you're a miner. So there we are, let's stop now at about 29 kilometers. I'm going to activate the bombard mode because this is a large ship and you can see all the bonuses going to place there. I would rather be able to do a lot of damage very quickly. Now, if I try and lock on straight away, it's gonna tell me I can't because my ship is cloaked. What I then need to do, of course, is to drop the cloak and immediately lock on as quick as I can. Once that's activated, I can hit those missiles and do an insane amount of alpha strike damage very quickly to Nicholas in his Tyra. That is what a stealth bomber is aimed to do. Ultimately, we're trying to get in there as quickly as possible, hit as hard as we can. And you can see even a Tyra with its shields is taking some real hefty damage without any bonuses on my end there. At this point, if Nicholas is trying to warp away, I've asked him not to, but ultimately he's going to be taking an awful lot of damage. And if there's, say, two or three of you guys armed with the stealth bombers, then you can really nuke a ship very quickly. I'm going to turn bombard mode off now just to showcase the damage dis uh, difference between the two here. And again, just chewing through the poor guy's armor. 
I will stop before we destroy him, as you can see. There we are. I'm going to turn that off now. I think that's enough damage done to poor old Nyx Tyra. But there we go. You can see that does an insane amount of damage. And again, if we have a look at the Bombard mode here, the main difference here is that it's the explosion speed and explosion radius means that you get that little bit of extra damage against larger ships, but it's not as good as against the smaller ones. Whereas there I've done... <laughs> there we are. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. Okay, fine. If he's asking for it, let's hit him with the end of that and finish him off. <laughs> I have promised him the Tyra that is currently sitting in the corporation hold as well. And so you can see I do a fair amount of damage in either mode here. I'm in bombard mode, which is going to do the most amount of damage. Finish him off there. Poor old Nick. There goes his Tyra kablooey in the distance. And that is what a stealth bomber is for, ultimately. <laughs> Shame. Let's, let's give a big round of applause and a thanks to Nick there. Oh... That was fairly spectacular. Why won't it let me type Nicholas properly? There we are. <laughs> that was fairly spectacular. It's always nice to blow up a ship. Um, so yeah, of course, he's now going to go and get himself his reward out of the corporation, and I will uh, will, will sort out any other replacements and reimbursement as well. So yeah, come join the Catskull Cartel. This is the kind of crazy stuff we get up to in our spare time. Anyway, folks, that about covers everything that I want to say about stealth bombers, covert ops cloaking devices, and uh, how torpedoes and bombard work and all that. Yay, industrial jobs are finished. That's my next video that I'm recording this evening. So thank you ever so much for watching, folks. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.